This is John Cola with OKRod.com. I have another exciting episode for you. I'm just driving, actually, on my way to a potluck, and you know, the title of this video is 18 Years Raw and Still Raw Vegan, Plant Based Eater. So, there's many videos on YouTube, you know, people saying, you know, one year raw vegan, no longer raw vegan, or you know, no longer raw vegan, and all this stuff. And you know, it kind of like, in my opinion, gives the wrong message. Because, you know, you can do this successfully. There are a lot of people that do it successfully. But, you know, a lot of them actually don't make videos. I have many friends that have been doing this far longer than I have. And I've been only doing this 18 years. I mean, back in the day when I got into it, I mean, you didn't even hear about it. There was no YouTube, man. There was barely an internet. But in any case, in this video, I'm going to share some uh, tips with you on, you know, why I'm a successful raw vegan and how you can be successful too because you know I don't want to see another one of those videos no longer raw vegan and, you know because all kinds of shit happens you know and people don't maybe do it the best way they're not using their brain and then they just bail and that's not cool so if I'm not looking at the camera this time it's because I'm looking at the cars in front of me because I'm actually driving so it's all good so the number one reason why I'm still raw vegan and it's been going really well is number one, I question everything, man. I don't care if I'm questioning my diet. I don't care if I'm questioning, you know, why this or why that, I'm questioning something in the garden. Why do I have to use the rock dust? You know, always question things, you know, never take things for granted, you know, always ask questions because if you start taking things for granted, that's in my opinion when you could get in some trouble. So always question and look for answers even if you think you're doing the best there may be something out there that's better number two don't get dogmatic you know a lot of people into the raw diet maybe they're on an 80 10 10 maybe they're on a 30 bad they seem to get dogmatic and they want to like shut everybody else out no my diet's best everybody else who sucks and if you can't do it then you got to eat more calories well you know that may be true for some people but you know that doesn't always work for everyone so you know, I want you guys to not be dogmatic and open, you know, your brains and open your minds up to other ways of eating raw, other ways of doing it, if the way you're doing is not working. Now, if the way you're doing is working, don't change anything. You know, that's totally fine. I don't care what kind of raw food, plant-based diet you're eating. I just want you guys to be as healthy as possible. And, you know, the facts are clear. The more fresh fruits and vegetables you eat, even if you're not entirely raw vegan, right? More fresh fruits and vegetables you eat, more plant-based foods, the healthier you're going to be. And I want you guys, no matter what, to minimize the meat. Check out my past videos for a good video with Jamin Sheridan and myself uh, talking about the five biggest reasons why you should reduce your animal consumption if you still are eating animals or animal products and to eat more plants. So don't be dogmatic and, you know, don't, don't just, like, shut everybody out and think yours is the best. I mean, we're all programmed as people to do that. We always want to find the best and then we stop when we think we found the best. But then, you know, I see a lot of people on an 80-10-10 diet, you know, high fruit diet that just bail. I mean, yeah, it works for some people, don't get me wrong. But, you know, a lot of people bail and then they, like, talk shit. And I don't want that to happen. And, you know, I have another video with Dr. Jamie Sheridan, really good too, you know, why raw vegans start eating meat. So check that one out. I mean, you'll get an earful on why that may be happening. So another trait of a successful raw foodist that I want you guys to have is very simple, get annual blood tests or other medical screenings to know where you're at. You know, I get standard medical blood testing to check where I'm at and before any situations arise, you know, I don't like say, oh man, my B12's low, raw vegan diet doesn't do, doesn't work, man. It's not just actually B12, it's actually homocysteine and methylmalonic acid is the functional indicators of B12. And that's what I recommend you get if you get tested. And you know, I don't just bail, like, oh man, it's a little bit too low. Okay, I gotta adjust, man, what do I do? Okay, maybe maybe take some vitamin or green if you wanna try the more natural way, or if you just wanna, you know, fix the uh, problem, take a B12 supplement. So I take a supplement, wear a patch, I also take the vitamin oil green and chlorella, which may, but not proven, uh, have B12 in it. Many other products that say they have B12 may be analogs. So yeah, before you're deficient, get tested so that you know, and you don't go like 15 years raw, and then you get tested and you're all jacked up because 
you haven't been aware of what's going on. You know, I have, I have good friends that actually can help you evaluate your medical testing. Um, you know, if you need that, because all a raw food, a vegan uh, blood test may not look like an average American's blood test because if you're looking at the reference ranges on the blood testing, you know, they're comparing the person being tested to like the average person and what it should be. But when you're raw vegan or plant-based eater, you know, some things will be different. Not everything, but just some things will be different. So I hope to have an episode soon with my good friend who uh, does that and uh, can help you further with that. Let's see, so I do get my blood test through Life Extension Magazine. They Every like February or March or April or something, they have an annual blood test sale. And that's when I normally get mine done. In addition, I do other medical screenings uh, and actually alternative medicine screenings to just check where I'm at and see. And if there's something wrong, man, make adjustments, man. Don't just bail. Oh, raw foods didn't work, man. I'm bailing. No. You need to figure out what's going on and figure out how to correct that in, uh, you know, a diet that works for you. You know, I'm personally on a plant-based diet. I don't believe in consuming animals. And so that's what I'm going to strive to do. So if I had some malnutrition or some deficiency, then I would try to, number one, get my nutrition from foods I eat. That's where we should get our nutrition from, from the foods we eat. And, you know, the problem is most people might eat, be eating 30 bananas and a head of romaine and lettuce a day, and you're missing out on cruciferous vegetables, you're missing out on allium family, you're missing out on so many different foods in the world that are available that have different nutrients in it. And I want you guys to eat a wide variety. I mean, I'm still adding new foods to my diet every year, man, that I never knew about, you know, exotic, wild, edible greens and foods from different countries, man, and even growing some really cool things myself. How many of you guys have ever had babaco? That's actually really rich in protolytic enzymes. Anyways, yeah, so always get a varied diet and try to eat a lot of different foods so that you don't become deficient. So that's, I guess, the next thing right there, man. Eat a variety of foods. Don't just eat, you know, a, a limited diet. Try to eat as many different kinds of foods as you can get because each different food has a whole spectrum of different phytochemicals, phytonutrients, vitamins, and minerals. And those phytochemicals and phytonutrients are, you know, some of the most important things in foods to me. It's not necessarily the vitamins or whatnot. The minerals are actually really important too. So another trait that I've used that has helped me out a lot is, you know, don't be the know-it-all, you know. For me to be a better teacher, I need to become a better student. So I'm constantly learning. Like every day, I'm learning something new about health, about gardening, about something in life, so that I can help other people. Because if you think you know it all, you know that's when things can go awry. When you think you know it all, and I got it dialed in, man, I'm keeping on this. No, there's always you can always do better, in my opinion, and that's what I encourage you guys to do. It's a principle I call Kanai, C-A-N-I, also called Kaizen. In Japanese, it means constant and never-ending improvement. You know, Toyota, if they make a car today and it, you know, has issues, or even if it doesn't, they try to improve it tomorrow and make the frame stronger, make the, make the steering, you know, uh, use less parts, and you know, make the car more efficient. And that's why you know some of the Japanese cars have high gas mileage and really good reliability, whereas American cars, well, we won't go there. <laughs> so don't be like an American car, man. Continual improvement, be like that Japanese car, have a high resale value. So another thing that's really helped me a lot is uh, bettering the quality of the food I'm eating. So for example, you know, uh, many of you guys might be eating produce already and organic produce at that, but is that the best you could do, you know, the produce out of Whole Foods? Maybe if you go to the farmer's market, that's even better, right? Well, absolutely. But even better than that is grow your own nutrient-dense produce that's grown in your front yard or backyard, even inside your house using compost, rock dust minerals, and you know, putting in the microbes in the soil that should be there in the first place that are not in conventional agriculture and may not even be in high amounts in standard organic agriculture. And you know, the bacteria is what makes the B12. I mean, a B12 deficiency is not just a thing for vegans or raw vegans, it's a thing with everybody because we're killing off the soils of today so that's one of the things I really uh, believe has helped me become successful at doing raw foods for a long term is growing my own food eating a good quantity mostly my vegetables out of my own garden and yes yeah, I have a couple days where I eat my ripe fruits off my tree too and that's really fun another thing that I do as a successful raw foodist is that I have the I can attitude you know 
don't let people get you down. I mean, there is a way to do it. There's so many people that have been successful on raw foods for a long time and don't just believe all the people that, oh yeah, I did it for a year and I bailed, it didn't work. You know, if something's not working properly, something's not working for you, make adjustments, man. Don't just bail and, you know, start eating meat because that's probably just gonna cause some more problems in the long run. If you implement some of those uh, tips and techniques in your lifestyle, hopefully you too can be a long-term healthy raw food vegan. So once again, my name is John Kohler with OKRaw.com. We'll see you next time. And remember, keep eating your fresh fruits and vegetables. They're the best.